Hello everyone and welcome back to the Capablanca Saga. We are back at the 1916 tournament uh, in New York. It's the Rice Memorial Tournament and this is the last game we'll be showing from this tournament. Uh, it's a very special game for a few reasons but we're gonna talk more about that after we check out the game. Uh, Capablanca has the white pieces. He faces a very strong American chess master o uh, Oscar Haas. And uh, uh, in uh, 1909, Hayes uh, won the uh, U.S. Open Championship, so he's a very strong player. Uh, he played two ch uh, matches against David Janowski. Uh, he lost the first one, he won the second one. So uh, definitely a strong player. And uh, this game, it really will show you <laughs> how strong he is. Uh, so without further ado, Hayes has the white pieces and he opens with e4. Uh, with e6, Capablanca goes for the French defense with d4, d5 and now knight to c3. Uh, with knight to f6 by Capablanca and bishop to g5, a very sharp line. Uh, with bishop to b4 and now comes e5 by Hayes. Uh, with h6 and now white has a few options. You can go bishop back uh, all the way back to d2, you can go bishop f4, you can go bishop h4. Uh, you can capture here, you can capture like this, uh, but then you get pawn captures here, f captures and rook here. Uh, and all, all of that is playable, but Hayes goes for bishop to d2. He just retreats with the bishop. Uh, Capablanca captures on c3, we have bishop captures, b captures, and now comes knight to e4. Uh, just an excellent square for the knight, it will not be easy to dislodge it from there. Uh, and uh, we have queen to g4 by highest. Uh, standard uh, motive uh, against the French going after the g7 pawn. Uh, so Capablanca defends it. King to f8. Uh, later he's going to go g6, king to g7 and try to bring the rook into the game that way. So he, he still will be able to castle artificially at least. Uh, bishop to c1. Uh, white doesn't allow uh, Capablanca to capture on d2 and he wants... Uh, this bishop to also be able to deliver this bishop to a3 check if needed. But uh, now Capablanca needs to decide, does he want to grab the c3 pawn? Uh, he doesn't. He continues in a principled matter, just c5, continues development, uh, attacks white's uh, very strong center, and he does want to open lines as white king is still stuck in the center. Uh, bishop to d3 by Hs uh, continues developing, and now queen to a5. Uh, a very nice move, uh, threatening c captures on d4 as the c pawn is pinned, also white, uh, black can just capture on c3, so knight to e2, you have to defend this pawn, and here you have to decide again what you want to do. If you play knight captures on c3, uh, then yes, you will win some material, but white will get a lot out of it uh, after bishop to d2, just pinning the knight, and now okay, c captures on d4 protects the knight, uh, but now white can just go knight captures on d4, and you constantly have to keep an eye uh, on this pin, it's very uncomfortable if you play queen c7, just uh, getting out of the pin. White can just castle, and uh, white has an excellent development uh, for for the price of one pawn. Uh, f4, f5 is coming, and it will be a very unpleasant position to play for black. So, uh, after this uh, knight to e2 move, Capablanca goes c captures on d4 first. Uh, we have castles by highest, and now comes d captures on c3. Capablanca grabs another pawn, and now bishop captures on e4. Pawn captures and now queen captures on e4. And here just knight to c6. Uh, you need to continue developing pieces. Also the threat is queen captures on e5. Uh, which just uh, would, uh, well, black would just uh, uh, be better here. So rook to d1. Preventing queen captures on e5 with the idea that if queen does capture, uh, then rook d8 check. Uh, wins the game for white. Now you can't capture with the knight because the knight defends the queen here. You have to move the king and now just captures, captures and you lose the rook on h8. So, uh, after this rook to d1 move, we have g6 by Capablanca, preparing to castle artificially. Uh, f4, defending the e5 pawn, and now comes king to g7. Uh, with bishop to e3 by white, and uh, now uh, Capablanca has some issues with the development of this light square bishop. The rook still guards the d7 square, so you have to figure out how to do it. Capablanca finds a very nice way, knight to e7. He wants to go to d5 to block the rook's control of the d7 square and develop the bishop this way. So knight is coming here, and the bishop will go, for example, bishop d7, c6, and it will be on a very nice diagonal here. Uh, with bishop to f2... Uh, and now comes knight to d5, as planned. Uh, and here, now that the bishop retreated to f2, uh, Hayes made room for this very nice rook lift. We have rook to d3, the rook is now coming to g3, and then ideas like f5 will be possible, h4, h5 will be an idea. Uh, he wants to start an attack against Capablanca's king. Uh, bishop to d7, Capablanca continues development, and now knight to d4, just bringing yet another piece into the attack. 
Uh, we have rook a to c8, Capablanca again just continues development, and now rook to g3. So you can see there's a, a lot of pressure going on around Capablanca's king. f5 now is the idea, if, as the g-pawn is pinned, you will not be able to capture. So first Capablanca gets the king out of the way, king to h7, but now the king is on this diagonal, now the g-pawn is once again pinned, so highest tries to attack it with the h-pawn. We have h4. Now comes rook h to g8 with the idea of defending the g6 pawn, and now just h5. The pawn is still pinned, so Capablanca is unable to react to this. Uh, and here we have queen to b4. Preventing this knight from moving as queen captures queen would happen, and also uh, maybe if uh, if white is too slow, then you can even go back and uh, try and uh, use the queen as a defender with queen to e7. Uh, but here we have rook to h3. Now the uh, the idea is switched over to the h file, and uh, it is all made possible by Capablanca's move queen to b4. Uh, and here uh, Capablanca's position is defendable, and uh, it's a, it's a very nice position, even though it looks disgusting. Uh, uh, but you want to go knight to e7, just uh, keep an eye on the g6 pawn and, uh, well, uh, continue playing the game. Here, Capablanca played a bit more too, uh, a bit too actively. He played f5 and he allowed the <laughs> the, the next series of moves. Uh, e captures on f6 on Passan with knight captures on f6 and now h captures on g6 with check. Uh, we have rook captures on g6 and now feel free to pause the video here and try to find the best continuation for white here. Uh, I'll give you uh, a couple of seconds uh, to decide whether you want to do it or not. Uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations. Uh, you are one step closer to beating Jose Raul Capablanca. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, uh, sorry about that, rook captures on h6. The rook on g6 is pinned and you have to capture. There's no option of moving the king because queen captures rook on g6. So you have to capture with the king and now knight to f5 check. Finally. Uh, this uh, queen will now be will now be won. Uh, we have e captures on f5 as the king is in check, and now finally queen captures queen on b4. Uh, but it's not all that uh, big of a big of a deal because Capablanca still has a lot of counterplay. And here Capablanca mentions that he was considering uh, either just a rook a, a rook c to g8, just putting more pressure on the g file, or does he want to go bishop to c6 first? Because if bishop to c6, uh, then uh, uh, white will lose uh, a valuable tempo uh, as rook to d1 will not come uh, as a, uh, with an attack against the bishop on d7. Uh, so here you would have to go g3, just uh, defending that g3 pawn, and now uh, you would get knight to h5 continuing the attack, or knight to e4 would be very strong just going after the bishop, uh, and it's just a very powerful position for black. Uh, but here Capablanca decided he wants to go rook to g8 immediately, threatening to capture on g2. Uh, we have g3, and and now bishop to c6. So it's a, a different order of moves, but uh, now rook to d1 comes uh, <laughs> nevertheless. And here uh, is the problem. Knight to e4 is still playable, but here Capablanca was worried about rook to d6. Uh, but it shouldn't be a problem for black. Here, if knight to e4, going after the bishop here, uh, now rook to d3, just defending the g3 pawn, and now you can trade everything here. Knight captures, rook captures, uh, and now if rook captures, bishop captures, rook captures with check, king to h2, and now just rook to g2 check. And here uh, you would have uh, sufficient, uh, uh, well, sufficient resources to draw this game with black. Uh, king h1 is not possible, as all sorts of nasty discoveries become possible, you would have to go to h3, and now just rook captures on c2, Capablanca would even get a passed c pawn, but after queen d6 check, uh, you can see that it will now be very, very difficult to escape checks from the white queen. Let's say king g8, uh, queen g5 check, king can go to h8, knock on queen captures on f5, attacks the rook. After the, the rook moves, now you could get queen to f8 and you will not be able to escape checks uh, from the white queen. So, Capablanca is not interested in this uh, drawn line that we've just shown, so he goes king to h5. Uh, king to h5. Uh, most likely with the idea that uh, after the shown variation, queen to d6 does not come with check, and he can just continue his attack. Uh, but rook to d6, and now we have bishop to e4. Uh, going after the c2 pawn, uh, also defending the f5 pawn, queen captures on c3, now with a double attack against the knight here, and now knight to d5. Opening up an attack uh, towards uh, 
uh, has queen and also an attack towards his rook. But here we have an excellent move, rook captures, sorry, rook captures on g6. And now if Capablanca captures the queen, rook captures rook, knight captures pawn, and bishop captures pawn. And you get this end game, both players have two pawns, but uh, Haas still has a rook and bishop against the, uh, a bishop and the knight. So it would be a winning end game for white. So, uh, Capablanca has to capture the rook, we have king captures on g6, and now comes queen to e5. Uh, and just king to f7, opening up this uh, file for the rook. Uh, we have c4, kicking away the knight, now comes rook to e8, attacking the queen. Uh, queen to b2, putting pressure on the b7 pawn, and now just knight to f6, getting the knight out of the way. Also, the bishop uh, from e4 guards the b7 pawn, uh, so you can see that the bishop is very useful there. Uh, bishop to d4 now, before capturing an a7, pressuring the knight here. Uh, and now just rook to h8. Capablanca's idea is that, uh, okay, now if bishop captures, now rook to h1 check, king f2, rook h2 check, will win back the queen. After king e3, rook captures, bishop captures, and even though Capablanca would be down a pawn here, he is confident he would hold this uh, position as it's a, 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 an endgame of opposite colored bishops. White is up a pawn, but black will be able to, to, to draw. So, after bishop to d4, we have rook to h8, as we've said, and now queen to b5, of course, Hayes does not go for, for this capture, uh, and here, we just rook to h1 by Capablanca. We have king to f2, and now a6, and you can see how uh, Capablanca's pieces are placed very harmoniously. The bishop on e4 is just a monster, uh, the knight defends it, also the pawn defends it, the bishop defends the base of the pawn chain, the b7 pawn, the b7 pawn defends the a6 pawn, so there doesn't seem to be a good way for white to make a breakthrough. Uh, but queen to b6, uh, the threat is queen captures on f6 now. And now you have two choices. Uh, either you go rook h2 check or you go rook h6 uh, with the threat of knight g4 check winning the queen. And it's a very nice line but it doesn't end well for Capablanca. Uh, as after queen to c7 check, king to f8, now you get bishop to c5 check. King to g8, now comes queen to d8 check. Uh, king to f7 and now queen to f8 check going after the rook here. Uh, king to g6, defending the rook, and now bishop to d4, with the idea of capturing the knight here. Knight to g4, check, king to e2, and now, finally, uh, you do have to uh, <laughs> play something, uh, as uh, uh, there are a lot of threats here, after king to h5, trying to hide. Now, queen to e7 is very strong, and there's really nothing you can do uh, to defend checkmate. If you try rook g6, then queen to h4 is checkmate because now the rook doesn't allow the king to escape via the g6 square. So, uh, rook to h6, although it seems like a very nice defensive uh, resource, doesn't really work. So Capablanca goes for the other one. Uh, we have rook to h2 check, king to e1, and now comes knight to d7. Just getting the knight out of harm's way, uh, attacking the queen on b6. Queen to d6, and now comes bishop back to c6, defending the knight. And here, uh, Capablanca managed to keep everything uh, in order, but uh, now his pieces are a bit, bit more passive, and it allows uh, Hayes to uh, finally continue his attack. We have g4, forcing Capablanca to capture, otherwise, g, otherwise g5 is coming, so captures, and now f5. And now you can see that a lot of squares around the black king uh, are no longer available to him, and of course, white will use that uh, accordingly. Uh, rook to h1 check first, king to d2, and now king to e8. Uh, we have f6 now, uh, and just rook to h7, keeping an eye on the f7 square. Queen to e6 check, king to f8, and now comes bishop to e3, uh, with a deadly uh, mate threat if Capablanca isn't careful here. For example, if he starts pushing his pawn, uh, then of course uh, you will see the mate threat. It's a very nice mate in three. Uh, I'll even let you find it if you're interested. You know pause the video and such. Uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations, you are an excellent uh, checkmater in three. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, bishop to h6 is the plan. You just give up your bishop and then the g7 square is no longer covered, just queen e7 check, king g8 and queen to g7 uh, will be checkmate. This was the idea behind uh, this bishop to e3 move. Capablanca spots it, he goes rook to f7, now the, queen, now the king can retreat to the g8 square. Uh, bishop to h6 check, we have king to g8, and now, uh, after the game, Capablanca said that uh, he was uh, c considering uh, resigning here, but he decided to continue the game as he, he was hoping uh, to see the following line. Queen captures on g4 with check, 
uh, after the king moves, attacks the bishop, now queen h5, threatening all sorts of nasty discoveries. Uh, and after rook captures on f6, as the rook is also under attack, uh, now bishop to g5 will win the rook. Uh, but this is what Capablanca was hoping for. King g7, uh, bishop captures on f6, king captures on f6, and here uh, white, white has a queen, but uh, black has a knight, a bishop, and two pawns, and it will be very hard to pick them off. And Capablanca says that if you, don't, if you think this is easily winnable with white, try and play this position against a master, and uh, you will be proven otherwise. Uh, but Hayes doesn't go for this. He doesn't grab the pawn. He goes bishop to g7. Now the the idea is just to get the queen uh, around just either maybe like this and then bring the queen over to the h8 square, deliver checkmate. Uh, or after Capablanca's move g3, now you also have the ability of going queen to h3. Uh, but Hayes first uh, decided to block the pawn with the king. We have king to e2. Now comes g2. The pawn is defended by the bishop and now king to f2. Now the king defends the g1 square uh, and knight to f8, kicking the queen away. We have queen to g4 now, again with all sorts of discoveries possible. Uh, knight to d7, making some room for the king if the bishop decides to move, let's say, to, <laughs> to h8, although it's a, it's a weird idea. Uh, and now just king to g1, blocking the pawn all the way. Uh, with a5 by Capablanca and now a4. Uh, first, Hayes decides, okay, maybe you just want to capture here so I can capture the g2 pawn. And Capablanca says, okay, let's let's do that. We have bishop captures on a4, and now just queen to h3, threatening checkmate. And now Capablanca has to capture either the bishop or the pawn on f6. He decides to go for the pawn with rook captures on f6, uh, and now comes bishop captures on f6. Knight captures on f6, and now queen captures on g2 with check. King to f8, and now queen captures on b7. Uh, with bishop to e8, retreating with the bishop, and now queen to b6, going after the last pawn. King to e7, queen captures on a5 by highest, uh, with knight to d7, and now king to f2, he just starts uh, bringing his king into the game. Uh, bishop to f7, now comes king to e3, of course the pawn is immune to capture because queen before check just picks it up, as you can see. So uh, king to d6 was played, and now comes king to d4. Here we have king to c6, and here in this position, uh, Haas just played queen to f5, and it was in this position uh, that Jose Ruel Capablanca resigned the game on move 66, uh, because his bishop is trapped, and the game is of course lost. Uh, there's nowhere to go, you can go here, but then just queen g6 check, uh, picks up the bishop, and well, let's see, this happens. Now you have a queen and pawn against the knight, and uh, of course, even Capablanca isn't that strong that, uh, to, to continue playing this game. Uh, but yeah, uh, like Capablanca said, he he did consider resigning uh, long ago, all the way uh, on move 50, uh, as he was hoping for this line. But you know, uh, you you have to hope that your opponent will blunder if there's uh, you know richness in the position, if 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 it's possible to use combinations to get out of uh, tricky situations. But here, Hayes just played a perfect game, and here this is uh, from Capablanca's book where uh, Capablanca mentions this game. He says a, fi a fine game on Hayes' part from move 25 on. Uh, for while black uh, having the best of the position missed several chances, white on the other hand missed none. So white indeed played an excellent game. There were really not even well, maybe inaccuracies, but definitely not mistakes or blunders, and that's what you need to do to defeat Jose Ruel Capablanca. But then again, on the other hand, he did play the French, and uh, even, you know, without studying opening theory, no one, even Capablanca isn't good enough to play the French. So yeah, uh, that's uh, pretty much it for this game, and it's in interestingly, this is uh, the last game Capablanca will lose for a very long time. I will not mention for how long, if you're new to the chess, maybe it will spoil the rest of the Capablanca saga for you, uh, but you know, when I say a long time, I mean a very long time. And here is uh, basically the beginning of Capablanca's legendary unbeaten streak. And we do have the standings, let me just not uh, forget that. Here are the standings of the Rice Memorial Tournament of 1916 in New York. So let's check it out. First place, of course, as expected, Jose Ruel Capablanca. 14 out of 17 points, 12 wins, one, only one loss, the one to Oscar Haas, and four draws. Uh, three whole points ahead of second place, David Janowski. Uh, 11 out of 17, uh, 8 wins, uh, 3 losses and 6 draws, and Oscar Haas, uh, after winning this game against Capablanca, 10.5 out of 17, uh, 8 wins, 4 losses and 5 draws. Uh, so the three of them uh, in top three places, then we have uh, uh, Abraham Kupchik, uh, Borislav Kostic, uh, then Jacob Rosenthal, Jakob Bernstein, uh, Albert Whiting-Fox, Alfred Schroeder, 
uh, Albert Hodge, Roy Turnbull Black, uh, Edward Tenenwurzel, uh, Frank Kendall Perkins, and Newell William Banks uh, in last place with 2 out of 13. So that's basically it for this uh, Rice Memorial Tournament of 1916. I uh, still haven't decided where we're going with the Capablanca Saga. I will uh, decide tomorrow and then we are continuing. So we will either visit one more tournament uh, or uh, go straight for the for the World Chess Championship match with Emmanuel Lasker. Uh, if you if you feel like it, you can even uh, you know leave a comment and uh, and mention if you would like the the uh, you know check out a, a few more tournaments or maybe just one more tournament before the championship game with last uh, match with Lasker or you want to go straight into the match with Lasker. Uh, but yeah, uh, that's it. I do hope you enjoyed it and you know don't if you're not really into opening theory, don't play the French. Uh, I would like to thank uh, Irina Sanamov, Gleb Komchekov. Uh, KD Nuggets, uh, Robert Youngquist, and Nicholas Kron for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot, I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you soon, uh, most likely continuing the Capablanca saga, but as usual, checking up on your suggestions and, and what happens in the world. Uh, so yeah, uh, thank you all, I will see you soon, and have an excellent rest of your Saturday.